evolution, and hopefully they can repeat success. Down we, there. And we don't see very many AD carry bans. This is there's less than fingers on my hand yeah. that we've seen in the NALCS. You know what else is rare is banning both Pantheon and Wukong. Like those two junglers <laughs> are sort of aggressive niche junglers. Those are not yeah. common jungle bans. Usually it's the Vi and the Elise that were taking all the hits. But these are aimed directly at Crumbs because he's sort of followed in that line, the vein of the Dominates and the St. Vicious, where they love going with the a little bit less used but very potent yeah. it's attack all about damage that junglers. Lately. Pantheon and Wukong trying to sort of gut the team here from the jungle. Vi is up. Olaf is finally left up for Zuna in a game it has been consistently banned, and it was his first champion first win that XTG was able to find as he was a jungler here in the split. Yeah, Olaf could very well be a, a nice comfort pick for Zuna. Uh, and they do usually spend some of their early picks more towards the jungle. Yep. So I would not be surprised. Ooh. There we go. There it is. He's feeling good on that. Looking at the other side, dig the toss. Wow, they get Kiwi Kid that Annie. That is actually really big for them. And that Gragas pick, even bigger. Those two picks, man, there's going to have to be really good ward coverage from XCG because Dignitas, either of those two champions roaming around the map could just create havoc. That was one of the keys to their the beginning of their yep. win streak was a roaming Annie from Kiwi Kid that started off a lot of plays, not even centered in the bottom lane. You know, these are great bands here, Kobe, but the lesser of the evils that are left up are still scary powerful. <laughs> there's still a lot of high tier picks coming in. We're looking at Smithy to have a Sivir pick up here in this game. The man Cloud's looking to discuss that with the team. Can't believe Scar got his Gragas this game. He has controlled, and I believe it was Gragas that got Dignitas going when Scar played it for their streak. Got that win, and then they just kept rolling. Yeah, that banning Gragas against Dig is sort of like a two year old strategy, maybe even like bordering on three years. <laughs> people have been banning Gragas against him. But every every few games, you know, somebody lets it through, yep. and then he reminds everybody why well, you should not let him on that champion. But it's not like XCG do not have a plan of their own. Mm -hmm. We always talk about the Sivir and Shivana combo being great. It's doubly so with Olaf. And popping the Ragnarok on the hunt with him is amazing. And they've got the classic Leona going with Sivir. Yep. So it's a good first three picks here for XDG. Indeed, a very nice combination. Cutie Pie back on that Lucian. This is going to be 0-3 for him. This will be his fourth attempt at Lucian this game. We'll see if they do play the bully lane. He's against that Sivir. We saw this matchup a little bit just a few minutes ago. Yeah, saw the exact same matchup. Yep. And in that matchup, Leona Sivir got the early shove and just were able to farm pretty easily. Yeah. We're not punished at all, um, really, in lane. That Mundo is up. Probably going to be that last pick coming in for the side of Dignitas if it's really not grabbed over here. A lot of top and jungle, not jungle rather, mid being left out for XDG. Mm -hmm. So the top, probably going to be another melee uh, tanky bruiser that mm -hmm. goes along with Olaf and the on the hunt to dive real deep. Classic Mundo. And then the mid, they're definitely going to need uh, some variation there. I guess they don't want variation, and they just go full Zerg on us. Wow. Everybody going to be diving to the back lines. This is an Ra almost all melee team. I mean, uh, Raise Sivir, your hand if you like to bring AD to the table. sivir has got short range. This is going to be a really, really intense early game. XCG will be forcing dragon fights. They will be looking to roam, catching members of Dig away from turrets, and trying to punish them. Wow. Really, really aggressive uh, champions here from XCG. Easy to figure that their Renekton pick should be the lock-in. If it's going to be the third time being played by Cruiser, that means he has a chance to make it 3-0. and oh, He is undefeated on that champion, so the lock-in would be quite sufficient for this comp. All right, so Cruiser actually going to be going up against Mundo this time. So we'll see if he can actually make the early ganks work for his <laughs> advance yeah, and yeah. do a turret dive towards XDG. Because Lee Sin and Renekton are very capable of taking out a Mundo yep. early. Like under we said, his turret. had to have that somewhat damage dealing champion. Mm -hmm. Meteo said once you get him under the turret, you get him down. Zuna gets his ol off this game, really liking the compositions. And XDG always trying to bring out something that you haven't seen. Like we've seen this, but not from them. Yeah, I mean, this is a real, real heavy uh, Zerg 
composition, and Gragas is a great counter. So Skara's ultis are going to determine a lot for this team. As soon as everyone starts to charge for them, he's going to try and yeah. just scatter the battlefield, create chaos, and knock them backwards for the duration. Because if they can kite backwards for a little bit and rely on the Gragas ult and the Lee Sin kick, yeah. then they can easily turn this one around. So this will be very interesting to see. Because if, if XCG collapse on somebody, it's going to be like a pack of wolves just They're hungry. destroying. Rabbit like coming in strong. Well, they're locked in, so let's check who you think will be ending the weekend with a win here. According to LOLESports.com, with your votes, 88% of you think that Dignitas are going to end this week with a much-needed victory. Yeah, uh, pretty big fan favorite here, Dignitas. They've got some charismatic players on their team, yep. so can't really blame those fans. But just as it's a much-needed victory for Dig, it's almost a more-needed victory, oh, yeah. here, if you will, for XDG. Dig just had the momentum. They've gotten themselves in a pretty good spot here, so the end of the season might not look as scary. But for XDG, the consistency that they've been showing, it's shaky. You can see how serious they are. The looks on the XDG yeah. faces, everybody very intense for this game. They really want to get back on track right now. XDG is known for kind of going in and practicing their games, 1v1s for tacos, you're not seeing that too much. The stress is there. They're worried about the kills they're going to get in their own lanes. Tacos after the victory. All right. So I do want to point out the early actual ward coming down from Bloodwater. He's got the Welcome full three-minute ward here. They don't have to rely on trinket wards. They actually will have a little bit of extra vision. Yep. And he's also gone with the Targon. So the early shove probably going to be attempted once again, by the Silver Leona lane. No surprises there. Interesting. Doran's not being purchased by Kiwi Kid. Yeah. Just get the ring out. Hopefully uh, he doesn't get yeah. crushed down too it's hard still, by that it's lane. It's still Doran. Like, Doran has a lot of items. You know, he's got rings. He's got swords. <laughs> his he's got shields. His stock is going up this season yeah, so he's, much. He's got plenty of rings to sell. Kiwi Kid picking himself up one. He is going for that strat I was talking about where you just spam Q onto Leona early. Try and harass him down. Yeah. So when Bloodwater goes in for the executes on the melee minions and the cannon minion, um, Kiwi Kid really going to try and punish him for it. Maybe even a swap down here. There could be lane movements because we're still pretty early here on the timers. And it's a very interesting movement by Man Cloud getting very deep. Very deep inside that bottom side. Go for the three man. Oh, late invade. They've got a real ward, as I said. Three-minute ward here from Bloodwater. He could pop that sucker down on blue. He used the regular one. Yeah, well. He got Trinket. <laughs> Trinket one. That's only a minute. We'll see what vision that gives them. I don't know if anybody's going to be walking straight across that path. Yeah, it curves into the blue just enough. They'll see him as he walks out of the brush. Zuna starting on his red, as well as a red start for Crumbs. We're going to get help in the opposite And look lanes. at Benny. Waiting for him in the tribush here. He wants to get early advantage Huzzah! in lane. Bam, first cleaver landed. He's established top laner dominance. <laughs> Got him in a real stranglehold to start. Man Cloud meeting up with Scar in the mid lane. Blades versus barrels. We're going to see how this one plays out. Man Cloud should be able to E out of that barrel damage quite often. Yeah, as soon as he uh, levels up the right. shield, then he'll be able to trade much more effectively than just using broken wings. And as you can see there, Kiwi Kid, you thread in auto attacks every time you Q. Because Andy's got a great auto attack now. There goes Man Cloud. Level two. Takes a turret hit, though. Whoa. Undoes a lot of that damage he just did. He won the trade and stepped a little bit too close. Dyrus talking in the lane. Those little things yep. can easily give it back to Skara. And with Man Cloud taking that W second as well, the safety isn't there from Shield. Yep. Meanwhile, down bottom, as I said, Kiwi Kid doing a great job threading in auto attacks mm -hmm. along with the Qs harassing both members, and this is the reverse situation that I thought we were going to see last game, Right. but actually played out here by Dignitas. They did a good job of getting the early level two. And this is the third wave. Dig has been zoned here. They're finally hitting level two. Mm -hmm. Very that's good play. That's a huge, huge cannon wave that's been built up by Dig. So not only did they get uh, the early CS lead, yep. but they can harass under turret while XCG try and make that lead up. And we can see Cruiser doing what he needs to onto Benny in the top lane, getting him slowly lower and lower in that HP bar and keeping him under the turret. And every lane is being pressured under the turret except for Man Cloud here. Yeah, and so back to the, oh, never mind, back to Man Cloud here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he's safe now. Let's 
the bottom lane, wow. because this Sivir Leona is getting a little bit behind early. Oh, man, they're going for the dive. Got to wait on it. <laughs> you got to wait, Kobe. They want to get a kill here. This is what happened for Cloud9. There wasn't oh, enough damage hit. immediately. Oh, no, he finally gets it before he gets the teleport. And Cruiser stands at the edge of turret aggro right there, takes an extra yeah. shot, allows Crumbs to finish the kill. So good synergy between the top lane and jungle. They do go for the dive. They do make them pay for the Mundo pick. Pretty much just what Medios was talking about in the interview. Zuno wants to make a answer though. Oh, it's going to be uh -oh. good. At 600 Surprise HP, attack. 600 HP to just about 1,000. Zuna's going to be forced to turn around in this one. No, he has 800 health. It looks uh -oh. to get down to 150 on Cruiser. Lots the Reckless Swing could have it. Oh, he flashes on him to get the immediate stun. They could have enough damage. One slice, then the dice. Oh, they're cooking up dinner tonight. Very, very dangerous to go for two versus one situations when you're still this low level. Level three, level four even, with a double buff to give away. That's a lot to give away. There's a high whoa, risk. Whoa, whoa, man cloud. Whoa, forward. the shield is on, but is it enough? What? No, it is not. Uh-oh, everybody's going aggro. All three lanes fighting. Bloodwater very low. He throws on the shield. He'll be all right from this situation. Smithy kind of calming things down here. What in the world was I even talking about bottom lane before? We took so <laughs> we went all around the map. Oh yeah, I was talking about the CS difference. Have to remember the Targons this time, because that sneaky sucker will uh, make you miscalculate yes. the differences. So they're not as Keeping far tabs. behind as it looks. They still are losing though. So be be sure about it. You know they're definitely on the Whoa. back foot. Oh, yes. Trying, trying to bait him in. Trying to bait in. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, the, <laughs> the old bait and switch from Cutie Pie. Crumb still heading around Got the back around the side. side. Oh, how did this? The barrier immediately coming down there. They really got out of that beautifully. Now they got another summoner there. A couple of summoners. He forced the flash. But so, stay alive. Yeah, plus barrier from Smithy. Mm -hmm. So definitely worth on the venture bottom for Crumbs. Interesting rotation, too. You know, what can you get after this? An early dragon is a possibility, but they will yeah. take a lot of harass, and they don't have deep vision. So it's definitely still a chance, chance for them, because they're not sure that it's going to be right. as easy as it is. Things get a little we safer know. with quotes there, because yeah. they were getting the, the teleport out of Benny, so they're a little safer without having him join the fight. We saw that was a huge bane for Team Solomid, uh, not for Team Solomid. Yeah. But with Team Solo mid being able to use that, six and a half minutes, that's a dragon going over to dig. And they start to actually take a pretty good gold lead, 2K. Yeah, they really wasted no time. I mean, they went aggressive top lane, got the kill, and then yep. it seems like Zuna and Mancloud kind of lost their minds after they saw their team member go down. Both of them went super aggro and overextended, giving up two more kills. So a really bad chain of events for XDG here resulting in a giant win for Dignitas, and I'm sure they're real happy about the start for this game. Skara always making sure he keeps that channel up. It kind of negates the fact that, you know, Riven's going to be getting that damage with the passive every time she casts. He's got Drunken Rage on, so he's got extra resistances. Works out beautifully for Gragas, and we've seen it already. skara has got a kill in the mid lane and Ooh. still trying to aggress. Yeah, close there. Just missing both spells, though. Means he has to back off, wait for his cooldowns, and... We have another dive top. Oh, he Benny. hit level six, but he it's did not hit be six. Enough. I don't think it's going to be enough no way. either. He may have, no, he huh? did put on the ulti. It wait will be. Just wait kidding. a minute, fancy feet. Benny's putting on the jets here. It looks like he may get out. Double. Oh, oh, oh he's got the ignite down. Taxes early gets a little bit of gold back on Whoa. that one. They they just split as soon as he let, hit level six. They got real scared. Oh, you got to expect this to happen. I don't know how close oh, he is to right. set. Oh, come All on, right. get a little antsy in the pants. Now. I don't know. That was just ridiculous up top. Not played out exactly as we expected, but they do trade kills and end up with junglers farming the lanes. So everything's right in the world. This mid lane, a whole lot of just throwing your body around right now. Scar seems to be winning at that. 7 CS, the kill in his favor. The Doran's ring back and by for him with the Fiendish Codex. Just keeping him on top. Uh-huh. Mancloud trying to answer and clean up these waves, but it's difficult for him to see us under the turret. Misses a good amount of them. Plaza's way back pretty close. Yep. Swinging away. See if he can get that blue buff into action here. He takes it for himself. Obviously, Man Cloud not going to require that or his top laner. So he can keep soaking up that experience and blue buff. But will it be what they need? Crumbs in the mid lane with Scar now could be ready to attack on this. But the bottom lane, every time someone wants to get all aggressive, every lane does. Yeah, they're definitely 
No strangers to fights here. And both of them heading towards level 6 pretty soon. Not only do you have to watch for the early level 2s in duo lanes, but level 6 is almost even more exciting. <laughs> because as we went over last game, Annie and Leona, whoever gets the first step and the first stun, can easily chain uh, into a kill down bomb. So at this point in time, usually, a duo lane will call for junglers to make them aware of the early level 6 that's about to come in so that they'll be in place to capitalize. There it is! Oh, Cutie Pie trying to get on the engage there. They go for the ultimate from Kiwi Kid. He goes back and it's the teleport from Betty. Whoa, they are, mm. they're just deciding who gets it. They said, all right, Smithy, come on. Bloodwater takes with the Ignite, well, One of these teams did call their jungler, and they also used the teleport just to make sure. For good measure, they end up getting the kill. Woo. And a flash here from Cutie Pie. I was about to say, I was going to talk about Cutie Pie's inventory. He's really favoring that attack speed with the Phage first over this team that can just rush him down. Mm. Or movement speed, I said. Yeah, move, attack speed. yeah. the movement speed there right. from the on hit is going to help him out. But he'll be a little bit less mobile not having his flash. He's trying his best yeah. to defend the turret. He does get some help from Crumbs here. Looks like they're going to lay a trail of safety down. And uh, XDG's yeah. forced out. They don't get a roam here from Skara. I thought Crumbs was going a little hard. Yeah. It looks like it's just a force it out. He is. He's posturing. <laughs> Scar goes deep into the turret. Nice dodges, though. Man Cloud's getting the, the perfect ease out here. They're still kind of, they're not still, but they're becoming more even in trade, I should say. Man yeah. Cloud's not being pushed out he's, as easy. He's staying up there in CS, even giving away a kill. So yeah, that's yeah. a job well done mm -hmm. for Man Cloud this time around. Just a little bit of a mishap in the early game where he overextended. Crumbs now, his health pot is ticking at max life. So that's a little bit of wasted cash money. <laughs> Just throwing it away. You gotta get all the pennies you see. Pick them up. Woo! And do like the parallel barrel roll or something. Perpendicular kind of strategies coming out from Skara. We'll see if he does the flash body slam next oh, time. Oh, Crumbs was wanting to make a play from the Wraith camp. That would have been pretty crazy but if he hit that dead strike midair. It would have had to be a really, really well coordinated. Well, uh, if it's not Man Cloud, it looks like it's going to be Zuna. They've got no ulti from <laughs> Gragas, though. So pretty much it's just a zone off turret for more turret yeah. damage. Since they're both melee, the, the best way to get this turret damage is first zone Ooh. Zuna off of the turret. And we said this was going to be hard. It's not very easy to get all melee people Ooh. into a turret takedown, especially when you can get aggressed on by an Olaf and a Riven right there. But Dig is making the movements, and they're making that happen. A lot of damage on that mid turret. Potentially sets it up for Dragon in 50 seconds, and that turret going down right after. Now, Dragon coming up pretty soon here. We'll have to see if Dignitas actually decide to take that one, because they've got the top lane shoved, but it's about 30 seconds off here because Mundo can get that one back. He'll right. get one wave and then he'll be able to start walking down. His teleport's not up, but he can start walking down before Renekton. If he clears this wave and then goes to Dragon, they will actually have the numbers advantage when it spawns. See which way Mundo goes from base. They're not going to go for the Dragon and both top laners do return to the age-old battle of Mundo versus Renekton. He is going to go down. Actually, he's heading towards mid right now, knowing that lane is quite pushed. Ah, he tricked us. Five seconds on the dragon. He's going to pass through this ward, though. It. So Dig's going to know he's coming, Kobe. All right, so they are making the call. Mm -hmm. And it looks like Whoa, Crumbs good just choice. walked right <laughs> That's by a smelly enemy. Man Cloud's sword. They make a little bit of a late call here for Dig. They, do, they realize it a couple seconds late. Didn't quite have it timed perfectly. So XCG with the man advantage and the Miss Leona ultimate. They should finish off Dragon now, try and get out before Renekton gets there. One and the other. Great movement from XCG. Now they still got to get out. It's not over. This is something There's that they... There's splits. Oh, man. Man Cloud, he's like, oh, that's this way. Wait a minute. That is a big crocodile. Dominus is on. They flash the cast. And it looks like they're kind of just chasing this one out. It's the full kite and defense from Zuna. Double undertow, Whoa. the kick from Crumbs. Here comes the Sonic Wave, resonating strike for the takedown. He does land another one. But meanwhile, bottom lane here for XCG has cheated away. And they've tried to get some extra gold from CS while their jungle is being invaded. And now they've been cut off from their own base. Can they escape from this one? How much pressure are they going to put down? They're doing multitasking here. Kills in the mid lane. Three to the bottom lane for the party as well. They are all over the map. The omnipresent kills to come in here. A turret being taken down as well within that engagement we saw coming from the side of XDG. So trying to help themselves out a little too. They don't answer well, at least bottom, the minions. but they do get that mid kill. Yeah. So huge for them. Taking down Man Cloud once again. Scar, even after that kill, not really amused. 
Deathfire grasp right onto Skara. He is looking to take people out of the game immediately with that build. And he is against the Riven, who he's not feeling is going to cancel him out. That's not a Zanya's first. That is pure damage. Yeah, going pure assassination. You know why? All these champions will be in range of that. Usually, as Gragas, you're like, oh, good I'm probably going to be yep. far away yep. from their squishies. But man, everyone on XGG is going to be very close in the team fights. He'll be able to get that combo off very easily. And he's just looking for pure power. Well, Benny going in here looking to slow the Solar Flare. Nicely hitting the slow onto two. Benny's able to clear it. Cutie Pie so low on mana. And he is not going to have a fun time here. Very nice boomerang blade from the backside over the shoulder of Big Smithy. Really good answer from XCG. They at least are able to use the teleport effectively. Get back some kills. Now Man Cloud just has to be careful about overextending. That is a Moby Boots Lee Sin. <laughs> So, oh, very nice Q. Gets in the resonating strike, and that's going to be the blast backwards for the kick coming in from Lee. Crumbs is a huge fan of Moby Boots on a lot of his junglers because he is such a gank-heavy jungler, really liking to set up his lanes. Your shot caller, you got to move fast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Think gotta, fast, move fast. Yeah, exactly. You took the words out of my mouth. 15 minutes here, 7-4. to four. A 2K gold lead is just kind of hovering there for Dignitas. It's been a few of these dragon pushes that XGG... It's able to grab last time very nicely, so Dick's trying to formulate that so everything is theirs. Yeah, and you got to look at the champion picks here because, yes, this is not a, gi a giant gold differential here. Um, you know, it's, it's still possibility of a comeback for XCG, mm -hmm. but because they've gone with such a melee-heavy composition here, the Zerg, they were really looking to be able to show their strength at this point in the game. This is where they're supposed to be shining with their team fight, right. but... They split up around that dragon fight after they got it and the exit. You know, they had burned on the hunt and they had burned Solar Flare, so they needed to all escape safely yeah. along the same path. They actually split two top, two bot or three bottom, and that really cost them because that's where Dignitas was able to get, you know, not only kills, those aren't yeah. really the biggest part, but the map pressure they got after that really slingshot them into the lead. And it's going to be hard for XCG to get it back because they really just shine in the team fights, and it's going to be difficult for them even in that phase now. Got to tick against you when you're doing the right thing, and the other team still finds a way to kind of make it wrong. Dignitas is doing just that. A great push by Cruiser in the top lane. Skara has been punishing this middle lane. 104 ECS to 114. Benny and hard. Hard fought by Cruiser in the top lane here. That Tiamat with the Giant Spouts keeping him well healthy in these fights. Popping the ultimate pretty early here. All he's got is a Sunfire, so he's scared of this Renekton. Cruiser is able to lifesteal very easily with his Hydra, so even though he doesn't have... Oh, here we go. Again, another gank from Crumbs. This one is so deep, though, that's easily defensible. He's like, I'm not here. Yeah. I'm not here at all. You saw nothing. Zuna, go back to your well, He's got go the back undertow. To we got a little bit of vision. He's going to know Crumbs is taking the wolves. And you see them somewhat formulating around this. Bloodwater now coming in. Going to get a ward over the wall, possibly. No, he's not. Now, the hard thing for XCG, because mm -hmm. most of their lanes, pretty much, well, all their lanes, are behind, it's hard for them to hold all the lanes. They're still trying to hold all lanes at once. And Dignitas have the upper hand in every single one of them. Ooh. So. They're easily able to rotate around and grab the turrets because they can take any member of XCG in a one versus one situation. Really, XCG need to have a numbers advantage to hope for a comeback pick. Dignitas play, playing off a lot of strengths that they have right now. They are actually the weaknesses of XDG. The flash being Donovic Smithy we just saw trying to be exploited in the bottom lane there. He keeps safe though. That'll be up in a few more minutes with pretty much the flash of everyone, so they may be able to get into the fights they're looking for. Yeah, and you know what else is coming up in a couple of minutes is the Mundo Teleport. That's one mm. thing that XCG do have over Dig. If Renekton's not able to, or willing to go for the stun, yeah. then they can get that numbers advantage. They can force it themselves. So much punishing going into each lane. Dignitas, and they're kind of telegraphing this, right? They're not trying to split push everything out. They're like, we got five in a lane. We're eventually going to take it down. What can you do about it? I mean, it's actually he's called to go for a split push, and they're going to have Mancloud on Riven. Yeah. Try and get as much as he can while they hold a four-man turret. While XCG's team is not great at sieging up because of the short range, they're decent at defending it. You know, you've got Undertow. You've got Sivir. That's amazing wave clear. 
They're not very good in the offensive Siege game, but defensively, they're okay. Keeping them safe as they get closer and closer to home, as XDG needs a lot of that right now. They're down 4,000 gold. That deficit just keeps getting bigger and bigger. They're doing what they can to grab up some dragons, and they're doing what they can to keep the vision up. But right now, it's that hashtag no fog for dig on the side of XDG. Yeah. That is a lit up jungle. These are the fights that XDG want to take. So if dig are tanking dragon, that could be the extra added damage that XDG need to make a comeback and actually win a fight. If they call for the teleport, then it means they have not given up hope yet on the full 5v5 team fight. And I think they should just pull the trigger here. Oh Whoa! my god! It's Smithy almost gets zeroed out by two abilities. Skara tries to get himself in another position to go aggressive. Benny does come down with the teleport, but that's in defense. All right, DFG definitely paid for itself right there. He made X Smithy a non factor in this fight. Immediately guaranteeing Dignitas the dragon. Scar with the beautiful flank just waiting in the bush here by himself, makes the play, and forces XGG to concede the first uh, 20 minute dragon. The first 20 minute one. So it was three <laughs> abilities. The Deathfire Grass we used, but that's yeah. well, 1100 damage. He so has 1270 somehow. Pretty sure he knocks Smithy out of his regular barrel with his ulti barrel there. Might have been Man. the case. I would have to see that sucker in slow-mo again. I think I'm going to just to watch it again. 2020 on the clock. 7-4 to four as Dignitas slowly shows that they have control of this game. But the kills are almost yeah, coming immediately when it happens. XDG is forced to turn away from these fights in complete fear. Well, you can see, even in their own jungle, with Vision, right. it's very, very hesitant to go contest a red buff. It'll just come down to the Smite Wars once again. I don't know if we can call it their own jungle anymore. It's been leased over to Dignitas for the time being. We see Cruiser in the top lane, not giving Benny any breathing room. That teleport is down as well, so Benny's in for the long walk if he needs to help the team here. And Cruiser has, you know, he's going for a split push here. He's got Sunfire and yeah. Hydra, so he can easily annihilate waves. The only thing he's lacking is the vision in that side of the jungle. You can see it's pretty dark over there for Dig. So he, he might want to shore that up with a couple wards. The good thing for him is that he is extremely fed right now. 210 minions, and he can rely on his slice and dice to get him out of the gank that is probable to come. There goes the ward down, though, so he's ready. So XTG hasn't really been able to use their composition yet. We see they didn't go Talisman of Ascension. They have the Sivir with the Olaf, and they haven't been able to get it Dignitas. They're always grouped up. There's no one person to ever rush at and take out. Yeah, as I was saying, this scomp getting behind early, really, really bad for them. And then, as we saw the attempted comeback at Dragon, right. foiled by Skara, single-handedly. That two pink wards really shows the control Dignitas had over Dragon. They still stand. It's not a, a situation that XDG has approached yet again. They still have some time before the next Dragon, so they're going to have to be down there to clean it up. But right now, the pressure's been given to by Cruiser in the top lane. Benny has to keep responding there, and it's all about XDG adapting for complete, uh, almost the entire game now. And they've got to be careful, too, um, and set up their own vision inside of this blue side jungle because Annie, Kiwi Kid, you know, mm. he's got a itchy trigger finger. If he sees anybody <laughs> in range, they can catch somebody out of position with the Annie stun. He's very excited about finding them. his We've bear. We've seen how much damage Scar has. If they catch somebody, DFG Gragas is going to explode that person. And he's been chugging blue elixirs this entire time as well. That one just ran out. Going back to base, he probably pick up another one. Oh, never mind. He can complete the death cap all in one trip wow. here. After, you know. I'm, I'm not thinking that's going to be Zanya's after either. These yep. guys are so far ahead that there's been no chance that XG has had to mitigate any of the resistances necessary. 215 to the 185 in the mid lane. Top lane, 223 to 170. All the lanes are doing superb. So, XCG, if without the extra vision deep, can't jump on opportunities like they just saw here. If they had known that it was just three members of Dig and that Smithy uh, or Cutie Pie and right. Cruiser were so far away, they might have gone for that and, and you know tried to take advantage of the uh, the distance between the rest of the members of the team. But they don't have any vision to give them the confidence to make those plays that they need to get back in the game.
Dignitas sitting on two core items here to pretty much just the one. Some Bloodthirsters, oh. Sunfire Capes. That may not have enough for this fight. Dignitas is trying to force them into it. They know they have the upper hand. Yeah, it's it's rough for Dignitas to try and play the vision game right now because they only have two sweepers and they haven't bought um, enough replacement pink wards. They already placed two down by Dragon to get the Dragon vision. So with only five on the team, it's hard to get both Dragon and Baron vision at the same time. You just you just don't have enough resources there. Not enough trinkets, not enough pink wards. Well, we know Dig. Don't go by the B word. At level 15 average, the dragon gets up there in gold, so maybe they'll just focus on that. <laughs> the, bee, the bee baron word is not something they want to have within their games unless they know 99.9% .9 it will be theirs. I mean, really, what they all they have to worry about is getting caught out oh. by the on the hunts. So that's a huge cooldown. Catching Lee Sin is a very slippery thing. You have to be careful about blowing those. Looks like they could get a uh -oh. bit of their own engage on this as well. Cruiser coming in onto Zuna. The Ragnarok is going to be forced out here. Dignitas just gains a little bit more every time the XDG tries to engage. Every ulti counts. That's two down for XDG. And Dig really itching to make a fight. Come on, Fairy. What are you just laughing at? Is a extra wine barrel on the side? Just throwing the barrel out for some class. He's bringing some friends over later. 25 minutes into this matchup, Dignitas is going for the slow win mm -hmm. on this one so far. XCG is not out of the woods just yet. They really have some work to do here. And it looks like, I don't know, they need to get themselves some kills soon. It has to be on Scar. They got shut down gold. They're looking at everywhere if they can get crumbs and Scar. Mm -hmm. the, I mean, the part of the reason that Dig are taking it so slow is because... Yes, they've got great um, wave clear for when they push up to a turret. You yeah. know, Gragas and Lucian both amazing at damaging people under turrets. But XTG, all they have to do as soon as they see you at their turret is pop on the hunt, and they'll just fully chase you down. They'll just run straight for your back line, and they can still catch and engage there. If you're extended in a very long lane like that, they can catch up to you. So Dig, taking it slow. Grabbing up the extra gold around the map, they've you know established such good vision, they can continually increase this gold lead without any risk at all. I'm sure they have more than just Dragon Timer on the map right now. They're probably privy about the spawns of both blue and red buff for XDG, so they have a lot of things on their book they can take an even bigger advantage here. Scar is going to grab up blue. It looks like Dignitas is going to go ahead, take a breath. Relax a little bit, and we can see 1,200 on both Cruiser and Scar to go back and buy. Look at that mid lane difference. It's 9,800 to 7,800. So that's kind of apparent in all the lanes, the lead for Dignitas. Yeah, they, they did a great job in the early game getting ahead, and they've kept it up. Scar now has some spell penetration to go along with that powerhouse, Death Cap and DFG. So if he catches Smithy from the shadows again, Smithy's not ready for it with a spell shield, mm. then it'll be death this time for Smithy. Rum's just walking around. Feels like he's pretty welcome in the jungle. He has an walking escape route. He's here. good. Oh, oh, he kicks him as soon as Ragnarok goes on. Quite an unfortunate event. Here comes the teleport in. Benny's oh into the fight with the ult on, and Cruiser's going to be there to welcome it in. That's a big damage the from chase. a barrel from Skara. It is the chase coming in. Kiwi Kid on the backside. Timbers is still up. Will he? No, Timbers is coming around. He had thrown it down, and we're going to see what he can do. He's still on the run here, but he's been cornered there by There he goes. Gojo. He gets Timbers back. He may be able to save a little bit of damage here and deal some more out. Benny getting the kill with Smithy on that. So they were able to get a fight outside of the turret, and they were able to annihilate Kitty Pie before the fight even started. That's the only reason they got Dig Shots on the run. Now they need to make something happen after that kill, because this is a small window that will not open very often. XCG have to capitalize on this. Ooh, with Smithy taking a lot. They, they all have to walk around. Are they ready to keep engaging onto this? They did get Dig to spread out. This is what XDG has been wanting, a bit of Dig to group but in a scattered way. They're in pods of two, pods of three, and we saw Skara didn't even want any more of that fight. Yeah, they got a little bit more damage, and they got Scar's Flash, but it's not quite enough to fully get them back, so yeah. they need to return back to the passive play style and hope for another scattered pick. If they can find Dig again somewhere away from turrets... Oh, he's able to spell shield, though. He was ready for this one. It didn't come from Fog of War that time. 
Oh, Crumbs blowing the blast. Wait a minute. Skara wanted more. The Undertow's there. Bloodwater's just behind. Ragnarok is back off the Solar Flare. Whoa, are they going too far, though? A great kill for Zuna. Calling coming in from Cutie Pie, but he cannot get enough damage to make it count. Sometimes you just got to let him run away. Skara wanted that one a little bit too much. They were very, very mm. sad about letting him slip through their fingers and overcommitting to that chase kill could be... Again, another opportunity for XDG. They're slowly getting back into this. It's one of those small shutdowns we were talking about. It is two kills, not huge, but that is good gold that they're going to be getting on to champions they need. And look at this reaction from Dig. They are like, wow, we just keep getting cut out. Instant, four pink wards up here, yeah. four sweepers. They are going full on with this vision war here. They've just spent so much money into this. They're definitely going to be looking to control the Baron area and forcing XDG into a bad spot. They force XDG into Whoa. a bad spot. And we see Cutie Pie kind of doing the same thing here with the Cutlass on his Lucian build because of always having to be in a bad spot. He gives himself a little more kiting. Yeah, the Trinity Force Blade of the Rune King Lucian gained a bit of popularity mm. um, starting over in Korea, as a lot of things do. Mm. And... <laughs> And he's just jumped right on that train. He actually went with the last whisper whisper before yeah, grabbing right, that right. sucker. So it's an interesting little twist that he's got on it. So he can actually do damage to Mundo early. And it'll be very interesting to see how he uses that blade later in the game to kite around. Because he is Lucian, you know, with the possibility of resetting his dash. He's got very high mobility late game if yeah. he can land one of those kills. So looking at Dignitas now, you know, even uh, social media, them themselves said they falter when we don't hit those wheelhouse champions, when it's the comfort mm. picks. Back on the comfort picks, and things are right as rain again. Yeah, Scar with that Gragas. There's a reason that people always ban it against him. This is a fight away from turrets. Dignitas are going to take this That's one. quite a bit on Cruiser to start it off, though. Kiwi Kids on the backside. He does get Timbers out. It's on to Benny. Not too much of the back line, though. It is going to be good damage on to Cruiser. That's the tank being put out. The fadeaway calling from Cutie Pie doesn't allow the engage, but XDG's heading down mid lane. They didn't get it really a chance to set up all the vision that they had purchased there. Dig with four pink wards, four sweepers. We're just getting to work over in the Baron area. But XDG capitalized. Again, this is still that Zerg comp. That's all about these open area fights. And this is where they're thriving. They're able to get another two kills, another foot, another step back into the game. This is getting a little scary here for Dignitas to see so many fights go in the favor of XDG. It's got to be weighing on the minds of Dig right now. They are still trying to stay grouped. They still have the power coming from Skara, but we can see without that defensive build, he's forced to be out of the fight a little more than he wants to be. Yeah, I mean, they do need to kite back, as we said before, mm -hmm. um, versus... Very melee heavy team. Uh -oh. uh, the other opportunity is to catch people out on the other side. Oh, man, Cloud, a very slippy. Oh, he oh, actually gonna yeah. get a kill here. A beautiful hit. The wind slash already came out, I believe. And that's just gonna wear off a great save on Skara. Yeah, at least still blinking down there. 40 HP, he's fine. Getting back all the way to the turret now, though. Man, Cloud, that's the danger of Riven. Even late game Riven, mm -hmm. who Explosive. was shut down. One in three, he still got the Bloodthirster plus Last Whisper. That's enough to be able to burst down somebody like Scar, who went full offense, as you said. Man, Cloud likes to be on those OP playmaking champions. A lot of people see Riven as not being too strong right now, but you can see once you get her to that point again, she still scales where she used to be. She can still be Riven. Man, Cloud still looks to carry his team on that. 264 to 277, he's really gotten himself back in CS with the focus. I mean, they haven't been able to do too much on Dig's side of the map, so farming has been their only choice. Yeah, and... They're farming right back into this. They're almost back Absolutely. to even gold here with the extra dragon on top of the play from Man Cloud right there. Yep. That play just earned them a very late game dragon, which is worth so much more gold. As soon as the average level hits that 16, it's all the yep. way up to 1,300 gold for your team. Not quite there yet, mm. but pretty close. See on the side of XDG, they do have a little bit of armor pen coming out now. Like we said, that's affecting Skara. It affected Ooh. pretty hard on Cruiser, too. He went down first in that fight. XDG. There's the teleport. They go in. There it is coming on the right side. The Solar Flare just on the left, and they're going to engage. They are right in each other's face here. Crumbs tries to get into the fight. He goes out. His shield comes on. The Ignite may take him down, but he lives. Benny's trying to get to the end of the fight here. The barrel goes in. 
Though XDG is splitting a little too much here. They need to communicate. Cruiser back onto Benny. They didn't want any more of the fight, but Dignitas did. You get great attacks coming out here. Smithy takes the boomerang blade back, but it didn't oh! shred too much. Skara now a little too much ahead of the team. And Dig and XDG trading kills back and forth. Dig were able to kite backwards this time, and then they turn it around on Mundo after everybody's in the retreat. Preacher Cutie Pie able to use his Blade of the Ruined King on the exiting Mundo. So they secure the kill on the tank and then go even deeper for more. But Scar has to pay for that one with his life. Body slamming in for the extra damage. Gets cut down pretty early and they want to answer for a couple objectives after their team fight win. Crumbs is just moving so fast to utilize Vision in the jungle after that attack. He saw Smithy, but he said, my job right here is to get Vision. We're going to come back for this. Just you wait. It's so, so exciting when both teams are, are really built around those uh, mid-game team fights here. Right. Very close which one will Super come Super explosive. Top. But the Sivir is really helping out for XDG. Ooh. It was a long time that Dig had to wait out the on-the-hunt duration to let them do that re-engage. But it was played fairly well, and they did get the extra global gold from the mid-turret. All right, so let's watch it again. The teleport comes in at the same time. Kiwi Kid and Leona both initiating at the same time. Here's Crumbs. you got to pull back right now. They're trying to kite for the duration of this on the hunt. Everybody's running backwards. There goes the Randy one Sprock as well. Man Cloud wanted to get up to Crumbs execute, but Benny is the one who got the last notification that they were on the retreat. Yeah. So he starts walking back a little bit later than everyone else. Cutie Pie went in, slowed him with Blade of the Ruin King, and then Scar trades for Zuna. Ended up getting a turret as well, so very, very close still. That was a great turn there by Dignitas, but also XDG for keeping their head in the game. Doing as much damage as they can before any of the teammates go down. Really, XDG's ultimates for Dignitas, as they consider them, like you said, they just need to kite it out. Benny's is, is a channel. You have On the Hunt channeling for a period of time. If they just outweight those, even, even Wind Slash coming from Riven, if those are all down, they get this fight in their favor instantly. Yeah, you say just... Uh, <laughs> wait them out. It's pretty pretty hard to outrun it's a lot easier to say on the hunt. They've got a Leona <laughs> for the long range and right. double Randuin. So yeah, it's it is a touch and go here. It's pretty hard, but they have a talisman of their own. Now they're trying for it. Oh, forced to flash. He almost got stuck up there on the dead turret. Cutie Pie is able to get out of this one as well. He gets that talisman Can of ascension speed. Can Renekton get down in time? This is the time for the re-engage. Oh, he has got such a good cut on the oh. pie here. He can make it into the entire team. Cruiser may throw on Dominus as he enters. It's going to be a 3v1. The team has damage as well. He's right on the man cloud. Dignitas is just flooding in now to this fight. A little late on the backside, but XD has, has turned oh. tail. He only hits Zuna onto the side wall, though. Now they have to back off once again. Both teams using up all the ultimates. They have to have to disengage now. You don't want to give control of the map away at this point in the game, though. Look at the giant wave down bottom for Dig. Yeah. And no vision for XCG on Baron. This is the point where you make a risky call. This you have to choose. If you want to end the game now, oh dear. they're going for it. This is still very risky. The three members of XCG might be enough to contest this. If they just wait around and poke them inside the turret, they could cause Dignitas to be very scared and abort their mission. Baron looking a little low here. They do want to abort Kobe. They're going on to Bloodwater. Zuna comes up from the backside. That's some low HP bars on Dig. Does XDG have the focus to pull this fight in their favor? Cruiser goes down immediately. Oh Xmithy's big my. there with a double kill. Cutie Pie, Dig, why did you go for Baron? Calling to the face. Ouch. Wow. Classic Dig, I guess. Uh, they made the risky call. And they saw Mandatory Cloud down bottom. But that's Riven, one of the fastest champions in the game, using all those dashes. She was able to join the fight. And now it is actually G's turn oh, to go crumbs. for this ban. Crumbs, everything oh. is on you for the steal now. Great move by Man Cloud. Has to uh -oh. do it. Throws the Ignite down. The Smite is completely out of range. XDG coming up with Baron at 38 minutes. That's just pure frustration on Diggs. Side. They spent all that money purchasing four sweepers and four oracles, or four pink yeah, wards, right. and they never got it done. Right. But here's the fight. Yes, oh. they've got Mundo throwing cleavers at you inside the Baron Pit. You're going to get antsy. In come the harass from Sivir as well. They're just buy in time, buy in time. Here comes Mandory Cloud. Dignitas turn around. They're all grouped up for Zuna slow. 
and he just goes berserk. They pop on the hunt. This is the melee team in action. They don't let you escape, taking out three members, and then obviously they get the Baron after this. Calling to the face does not hurt at all. Ooh. Easily able to finish him off. They look great just holding the shield up in front of the calling and completely taking him down in the end. Said, you have no chance. Cutie Pie still trying to do what he can here. He is 306 to 296, but he does not have that 5-0 and 5 score that Xmithy has found on that server this game. And they were giving him kills to help him get a little snowball. We saw a few like Kiwi Kid waiting around in the bottom lane. Give Xmithy the last hit, and he's been doing great. Right now, with double buff, Infinity Edge going into the Spectral's Cowl. Now for a little bit of safety. Finally, 40 minutes into the game. We did say XDG was behind, but they're getting everything they need now. Man, Bloodwater, when he's got his W on, has got 260 armor himself. So no wonder the calling's not hurting that much. Even with the Last Whisperer, he's a tank as well. So many tanks on this XDG team. They're all melee, but they've got three really strong tanks now with the only real full damage sources being Mancloud and Smithy. And those two are the focus targets. So Dig looking to pick off either one of those guys. If they can get one early, then they might be able to actually turn one of these fights around. But currently, Baron buff is wow. enough to allow XDG to grab up more turrets. More turrets, the gold lead in their favor now. Things are completely swinging their way. It was the mid to late game that social media, the fans, and even XDG said that's where they have a hard time. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think we saw trouble mid to late game for them here. Well, they've really focused themselves with these champions. They're like, well, our only option is to go all in. Like, everybody's on the same page now. You can't be on right. any other page because that's all you can do with these, <laughs> these champs. We have to go all in. We chase with our on the hunt and just. It is a composition that can fall yeah, apart Yeah, kill whoever you can catch. Game plan: kill whoever you can catch. <laughs> I was asking Kobe, is when are we going to see the on the hunt to get that one person? It's, it's actually been the face-to-face the -face fights that Dignitas has been now giving over to XDG. Good wave clear still, though, to come from Dignitas. Skara doing what he can on Gragas, so it's still going to be very hard for turrets to get taken down if they're not getting split. And now it's a completely different story since, X, since XDG are actually ahead. They can make use of the teleport advantage, and they can slowly get the side. Here we go, initiation, this time from Dig. They do have to deal with Ragnarok here, so it's uh -oh. going to be a very long chase, but they all crush down. Wait a minute. Kiwi Kid's in the back. Timbers does get used, but it goes down immediately. Crumbs is there to try and help, but he's just a meat shield right now. Cutie Pie gets shredded, surgically removed by Xmithy there in the Boomerang Blade, and they are going to keep moving on to the base. Teleport comes in from Benny, evens up the odds there. You know, Dig really trying to make something happen with the numbers advantage, but no they could way. not get a good tippers there. And this is going to be XTG walking straight into the base. Dignitas with their backs against the wall after controlling the first 20 minutes of the game. Now 6,000 gold behind after being in the lead the entire time. That is the best news for XTG because the hard part for this team is getting inside the inhibitor oh turrets. Word. But since Dig chase outside of turret range, they get a free window right up the mid lane through the inhibitor turret. Now they've got an open door into the base, and it's going to be a lot easier for them to finish this one out. Mundo's getting pretty tanky. We see where that the line of cruiser kind of stops in that scale going up and up, and Mundo really has the mm. advantage now. Even as far behind in CS as he is, he's got the 10 assists and the 2 kills, and he is providing to be a huge front line with Zuna for these fights. And as you said, Bloodwater, too. They have three gigantic yeah. tanks with so much damage behind it in Man Cloud and Xmithy. Yeah, that support slash tank Bloodwater is really beefy right now. So here's the attempted chase. The tippers, as we said, they weren't able to get anyone important. They weren't even able to get anyone at all because Zuna pops Ragnarok. Once that tippers is down, there's no stopping this just stampede from XDG. So, you know, Kiwi Kid, yeah. he did his best, I guess. But man, they, they really were not in range. Cruiser so. almost had no effect in that fight. Man Cloud uh, dashed right by yeah. him, and they killed Kiwi Kid instantly. And you saw Cruiser, he's like, I don't think I'm going to come back in. Really wasn't a factor in the fight. So with him now in the base, maybe they will find something around one of the turrets that needs to be pushed by XDG. They're not going to be down mid. That inhibitor is down. We got about a minute and 30 on both Baron and Dragon. So difficult. I mean, it chasing really far out the base. I mean, they had no mm -hmm. counter engage. 
with the tippers down, and they also had no escape plan because yeah. Talisman was used offensively. Yep. So they really uh, exposed themselves there, and now it's going to be a full defense plan for Dig. It's code red right now. Code red. They've got a double thorn mail. Bring them out. We got one on the cruiser, one on the crumbs. They are against a very heavy attack damage team in XDG right now. You got the. Guardian Angel now on to Man Cloud. He can go even a little more ham if he wants to. The Banshee's Valonic Smithy. They may walk something in here. Yeah, the thing about going attack damage heavy, once you get Last Whispers and Black Cleavers on your main damage dealers, then it actually doesn't, it's not that big of a detriment. The Thorn Mails will hurt a bit, but a lot of these champions have lifesteal too. You can see double right. Bloodthirsters on the two damage dealers. Man Cloud just, he life leeches ridiculous amounts, as well as Smithy, so it can sustain through that damage. <laughs> Banshee's Veil and the There's just spell bubbles shield. all over him. Very nicely done. Doesn't take any damage from that quick poke of Scar's Barrel. A little bit of Lee Sin Kewage. 20 seconds onto the Baron. The Dragon is going to be alive, and Dignitas has a beautiful advantage and a huge minion wave up top. Teleport is not mm. up for Benny, so this is kind of a scatter for XDG. They actually are just posturing, trying to keep Dig from getting position around Baron. It looks like they don't even want to let Dig inside yeah. to get ward coverage human, of that area. Human defense. So they're posturing right now. And Dig, after the failed last engage that was out in the open, doesn't look like they're willing to try and take advantage of Mundo over in the top lane. That or they don't have the exact timer on teleport. It's pretty close to coming up now. That's true. So you you really have to be very right. spot on with you that teleport to go, uh, the teleport timer to go for an initiate at that time. Got to consider it's up, and it may hurt you a little bit because they could have engaged there, could have gotten a nice fight. Uh, oh, that could be Beauty Pie, a little close to the front line. It's going on to Cruiser. They had enough damage to take him out immediately last time. The kick is only on to Benny. Everybody sidestepped that. Beautiful job. It's going to be five members of Dig. The calling comes out. Benny's going to be the blocker there with the meat shield. Cruiser's going to go down here. Ix Smithy focused him very quick. Zuna with the help, and it looks like XDG is going to take the inhibitor on this one if they can push a little bit more. Timbers is trying to give him the zone inch, and they got it. Kill whoever you can catch, even if it's Renekton. They're able to burn him down, keep him slowed constantly with the cleavers, and on the hunt enables them to finish that chase. Now that Baron is up, it's the perfect time here for yep. XCG. Taking out the inhibitor and the main tank for Dig. If Dig get close to this Baron, then XCG can immediately turn around. But XCGs have to be always wary. Baron, oh, no. Baron steals. Oh, no. Baron steals are very Not real. Again. Gragas is a high priority Baron stealing champion, and Lee Sin as well. This game could very well go in the favor of Dignitas uh, in just a it. few seconds. Man Cloud didn't make it over the wall. He's forced to flash. Crumbs does have an accessible way into the Baron pit. He gets hit up a little bit more. They are holding damage on Baron. They're kind of pushing this off. Benny taking big damage from the outside. Crumbs is in. Baron is nowhere near smite range, and Crumbs goes down. It's a shutdown going to Xmithy. He is having an amazing game right now on Sivir. XDG keeps her eyes focused is on champions as well Why as the Baron. Alive? Man Cloud keeps it alive with a bit of lifesteal, and he takes down Cutie Pie. Well, that was a last-ditch effort for Dig. Trying to go for the steal on that Baron. Really good attempt, but man, Crumbs going in too early. Gets cut down. No chance at spiting that away because XCG play it well, and they keep the Baron above smite range that long enough to take down that jungler. And they even are able to get the consolation prize of Dragon. It was Air. really great coordination to stop attacking. Yeah, exactly. Everybody's like, well, I'd rather tank Baron at this point. We're all so tanky. Yeah, good point. Uh, it's, it's not really doing that much to us. So Mancloud jumps over to try and zone Crumbs. When that fails, they turn back on the Baron here. And you can see the call made. As soon as they go back on the Baron, Scar and Crumbs rush towards it. Because they think XDG are going to burn it down. It's so low, you know, that's a very real possibility. So you can't fault Dig too much for that play. Oh, wow. It's really touch and go when the Baron is that low. So yep. they, they made their attempt. But it was just a bit too early, and XCG come out on top. And everything is happening the way they want it to right now. Somehow they have grabbed themselves a 10,000 gold lead. And I guess we should say somehow they have played spectacular in the past 18 minutes of game. They started taking over just before 30 minutes. Seven turrets in their favor now. All that, game, all that gold came in such a huge surge, too. Mm -hmm. It's not something Dignitas was expecting to see in the next fight.
Yeah, XTG were just, they played the waiting game well. They were so far behind, they were like, okay, we can't make the plays ourselves. They wait for Dig to actually start off the plays. Outplay them. And then, we're, we have on the hunt. We have the mobility advantage. We pop that every single time there's even an opportunity for a fight. And since they got two wins in a row for the small yeah. team fights inside the jungle, they're able to get right back in this game and force so many of those fights where they're able to just take out Scar, take out Cutie Pie before it even starts up. Mm -hmm. All that damage, all those damage items meant nothing from Scar and from Cutie Pie because they had no life. Full build, full item Xmitty coming out pretty strong now. Puts the Zephyr in and these guys are even bigger in the tank category. Three yeah. Randuins coming out. Kobe, you said Dig was going to have to kite. I don't think it's going to be that easy anymore. So, as we said, I already mentioned the armor on Bloodwater. He's pushing 300 now. They can easily tank up turrets, uh, inhibitor turrets here. And Mundo's got his teleport once again. He didn't even, he wouldn't even have to use it. He could run down pretty much mm -hmm. in the time that it takes the channel at this point. So it's, it's XTG looking very fierce at the moment because Baroned Up, they can easily go for a turret dive. I like this buy from Kiwi Kid. He's still trying to have an impact too with his Deathfire Grasp. The Tibbers is up for this next engagement. We're 50 minutes in, longest game of this week, I believe, here. 18 to 9. XDG has they persevered through a bad early game, and it looks like they're going strong onto the fight. Cutie Pie on the backside. What a solar flare, and it's dead on the boomerang. Nick Smithy is just hitting those spot on today. Crumbs is going to fall. XDG coming from very far behind in this game, and it looks like they're going to grab a victory. They tried to put everything to obliterate Smithy right at the beginning of the fight, and they almost caught him, but. Quick flashes, quick spell shield, Smithy gets out alive. History may have repeated itself here in this game, the last game of the day, Kobe. Baron is not something to be toyed with. XDG was able to grab a huge advantage here at 30 minutes, 21 to nine. They put themselves up a nice chunk of gold at the end, but they get the victory and that's all that matters. We're definitely happy about the victory, happy about ending the losing streak. But there were definite mistakes in the early game. All of the lanes, actually. A couple mistakes going very aggressive. Man Cloud, Dying Scar on mid, overextending by himself. We're throwing. Up in the top lane as well. Some nice ganks. Some turret diving action. Good back and forth, though. Both teams. Film to be Showing watched. Pretty good. Yeah, film to be watched by Dignitas after this game. Definitely to see where they went wrong. It kind of sticks out as a sore throne, that first Baron, because Dig had such a great early game. They were just pushing, pushing XTG against the wall. They were completely on their heels, almost falling over. It's like XTG's silent. What are they going to do next? Do they have what it takes? And they knew the whole time. The mentality was.